Merry Christmas, everyone. Good afternoon. <laughs> Mike tricked me when I was coming in. He made me say good morning <laughs> again. <clears throat> I've been noticing in the news recently, uh, speaking of the tragedies that were referred to earlier, you know that the, the, hap the incident that happened with the children in Connecticut is like you said, like Mike said, it's one incident, even though it was horrendous because it was children. Um, it, it was sort of, it wasn't sort of, it was, it took us to a different level of realization about the tragic condition that this world is in. And I've really been thinking about how much the world is really groaning for God. Um, I noticed there was a, there's a newscaster, Ann Curry, some of you might be familiar with her, she's on Channel 4. She started a, she was so moved by the tragedy and so overwhelmed by the tragedy that she had, she within herself had to figure out what can I do in response to this. So she started Twittering, which I don't do, which I might, I mean, maybe I need to learn how. Uh, she started Twittering uh, and she started this trend of 20 random acts of kindness. I'm going to do 20 random acts of kindness, one for each child who passed away, who got killed. Um, and then eventually people started following her lead. It went up to 26 because they took into consideration the teachers and the, the parent, the mom, of the young man who did the, the killing. And I was moved by that. And I started asking God to help me see ways that I can do things for people, things. I was very moved by that, but I should be moved by that because I'm a Christian. But what really touched me was that some of the people who were moved by that were not Christians. Some of them, um, there were a lot of, I noticed that one thing that happens in these kinds of tragedies is that more and more you hear in the news, let's pray for the family or our prayers go out to the family or people start to sort of reach out for God. And the other thing that happens is that people start to reach out to other people. And I think that's interesting because it's kind of a reflection of that um, major commandment, loving the Lord your God with all your might, loving others as yourself. It's sort of a flimsy, maybe reflection of that, a shadow of that, and kind of points to God's purpose for us. And. I want to tie that, you might be saying, what does that have to do with the offertory? <laughs> um, we, uh, we know what God has done. We know that God is the hope of this world. Why do we give an offering? And our offering really makes a statement about what we believe as far as what the hope of this world is. It makes a statement about the importance of sharing the gospel. It makes a statement about how many people, how important the people are who are going to be reached by the various um, missions or, or ministries that, that the church is involved in. It makes a statement about us surrendering to God and His will for mankind. It makes a statement about appreciation love and gratitude uh, for what God has already done for the world and our, our desire to want everyone to know that, to know about that. So I was looking through 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, and I'm not going to quote the verses because it's like it's going to get really long and my time is going to be up. <laughs> um, three uh, principles that I, I hope we can remember, including myself, when we're giving our offering is that we give willingly that we give willingly and not under some sort of pressure that it talks about in chapter, in verse 5 of 2 Corinthians 9. Um, not reluctantly in response to some sort of uh, obligation. Um, not 10% because that's what you're supposed to do. Um, but giving from your heart willingly. Giving generously because we can't outgive God. There is no way to outgive God. And God has given so generously to us that we can't help if we love God and real, we real, as we realize more and more how much He loves us, we can't help but give generously. 
we cannot give enough to match what God has already given us. The other uh, aspect is to give cheerfully. And there's a really funny verse in uh, it's 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7. It talks about God loving a cheerful giver because whatever he gave, you know, we give, he gives back to us, uh, overcome, you know, you know, push down, shaking together and running over. Uh, but I, can't, I didn't write it down. There was a script, one of the verses in 2 Corinthians 9 talks is when Paul is talking to the Corinthians about how to be prepared for the offering that they're going to be giving. And he's even kind of playing them like, be, be like the Macedonians. See, they did this and you should do this and see what they did. And, um, but he talked about the Macedonians having joy in their poverty. And even, even no matter what's going on in our lives, we know that God is, is our answer. We know that God is our provider. We know that God is our protector. And we know that God is the ultimate end. And so we can give cheerfully. We can give cheerfully knowing that we don't rely on those physical things, whether it's the money or the time or the uh, conversation that we give. So what is God's response to this? And God's response is that he loves a cheerful giver. But as I said earlier, and, and then there is the discussion about reaping what you sow. And I'm going to just leave it at that because there are lots of people who talk about just give them your money and you'll get, you know, twice in return and all that. Um, so we already know that God is much more generous than we could ever be. Uh, but that God all, but it does say in his scripture, in his word, that he gives back to us more than we ever could give. It doesn't stop there though. It's not so that we can, you know, mound up uh, blessings for ourselves, but so that we can have more to give. With that, we'll take up the offering.